back boys, my name is Rob and this is Sarah. And in this episode, we're gonna show you how to install another diesel heater. This one's a little different than our previous two. We're getting good at it now. Yeah, we have a, <laughs> uh, a very small diesel heater in our van, which is Project Bad Astro. You can click a link right up here to see that install. It's kind of a neat install because uh, it's completely stealth. You can't tell it's in the van. We also installed a diesel heater in our schoolie, and that is our primary source of heat at our off-grid land here in Southwest Colorado. We are at an altitude of almost 8,000 feet, and that kind of uh, makes heating with propane a little bit more challenging just because and of the altitude. Expensive. And expensive. Yeah, and the other thing about a diesel heater is they're really cheap to run. 20 bucks of diesel will heat your place for quite a long time. On our schoolie, we go through about $20 worth of diesel in maybe two weeks. And that's-, that's In with, winter. Yeah, that's with like- yeah serious snow and, and winter and everything. So. We've had to troubleshoot a few times. There were some um, settings issues and some unclear instructions on our various models. And we had a couple of really cold nights when I thought we had broken our heater, but thankfully Rob is a wizard. And so <laughs> figured it all out. <laughs> yeah, the important thing is you need to know your altitude and adjust your fuel and fan ratio uh, based on what altitude you're at, or you're gonna use it and it's gonna eventually poke up the exhaust and stop putting out heat and maybe kill you. This one has not done that yet. Yes, so let's talk <laughs> about this. This is an all-in-one eight kilowatt heater from H Calorie, and I've never installed an all-in-one heater, and I've also never installed a diesel heater in a building or a shed instead of a vehicle. There's four holes on this total. There's an in and an out that you put inside your building, and then there's an in and an out outside the building. Some people screw this up when they mount the intake outside and what that's going to do is it's going to have to heat the cold winter air from outside up to whatever temperature you want in here we didn't do that so this is a sealed system it's not we're not pressurizing or putting vacuum in here let's jump to the install all right let's see what we have in the box here what i've been confused about and what i haven't researched is how this works being an all-in-one unit because you do have a very hot exhaust system and you need to be able to breathe from outside the vehicle or enclosure so right now I'm not sure if this unit mounts outside or inside. Now a lot of these all-in-one units, if I were to take this enclosure off, you'd really just find the same thing as any other of these Chinese diesel heaters. They're about one quarter the size, roughly the size of a, a shoebox. But the advantage of these all-in-ones is that you don't really need to mess with the mounting the fuel tank or the fuel pump, it's all just built in. This and this has to go outside, or this whole thing needs to go outside, and then these tubes need to come in. So, not sure how we're doing this yet. One of the issues I have with these all-in-ones is they're supposed to be easy. Like you see it, it's all in one thing, right? Should be easy to install. However, the only part that's actually done for you is the easiest part the fuel tank and the fuel pump is built into this, but they don't give you a way to get the exhaust outside. On a car, you're drilling a hole through metal, which is non-flammable, but if you're doing a building, you need a way to get that hot exhaust outside without causing a fire. Because this is an all-in-one, I can't mount the fuel tank on the outside of the building. I'd prefer to have the fuel tank like right here next to the door or something. So if I spill diesel, it's not gonna stink up the interior of the building. So I think what we're gonna try and do is mount it underneath the workbench here and vent the exhaust through the wall in that corner. All right, we're just gonna cut a hole in this wall somehow. I'm not sure how pretty it's gonna be because I don't have the right tools, but let's just get this done. The exhaust is gonna be on the side of the heater where the heat comes out. In this case, it's closer to the left. And I tried to do a continuous bend here to not cause any kinks, and then run it kind of straight at like a 20 degree, 30 degree angle downward. So I threw here in the corner, this is the exhaust, and this is where I'm gonna drill the hole. So 
here's my exhaust, which I've wrapped with header wrap. And I just used the clamps that came with the kit. I thought it had the uh, stainless zip ties, but I can't find them right now. So now I'm trying to figure out how you tighten the hose clamps down there. And what they've done is they've provided some access holes on the side here. So just make sure you do this part before you do everything else, I guess, because otherwise you're not gonna be able to get to this ever again, ever. The other thing I'm gonna wanna do is on the exhaust, I'm gonna take some foil tape and just put it over the edge of the plywood and the uh, vapor barrier. Just put one more inflammable layer in between the exhaust, the heat wrap, and now here's the third layer. We are running out of light right now, but I picked up this outlet cover that just has a circle in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it over this. Looks like I might need to remove the hose clamp first. What that's gonna allow me to do is to push the pipe off from the wall and then screw in uh, these screws to help suspend it so that it's not resting against the wood. All right, now we just need to install the muffler and the air intake. What you want to do with these mufflers is always point this little crease here straight down and that should allow the moisture to exit the bottom of the muffler. This is installed. I did not totally seal the exhaust down there so I got a little bit of an air leak and I also have not framed out the interior of this wall to keep the insulation up there. That's okay, this is just gonna be a test fire because I do want to install an external outlet out there. So this is just to make sure everything's working. So it's really simple to wire. You just need a positive and a negative 12 volt source. My whole power station over here, I actually didn't run any 12 volt to this side yet. I'm going to because I'm gonna install a bunch of USB chargers. These things are awesome. I'll put a link down to these below, but love these ones. We're just gonna run some wiring from my fuse box over to this corner for now, and then we're gonna be using that for 12 volts for a bunch of other stuff over here, so. Plug the fuse in, everything's lighting up, so we're gonna go ahead and fill this thing up with fuel. I don't know if we need to prime it or if we can just start it, so we'll give it a shot in a second here. All right, boys, we're almost ready to fire this thing up. I do want to say that these instructions are terrible. Like, I don't understand. Every diesel heater comes with the same instructions and they don't tell you how to prime it. I don't know if I'm supposed to prime it. So we're just going to try to turn it on and see if it starts because there's really not much fuel line in there. I think priming makes more sense if you, if you have, have the, long fuel the tank, line, you, know, yeah. you know, far from the heater. So we're just going to take a guess because every single... Because I'm cold. Because I'm cold and I want the heat now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to press and hold this. It says on. And then it does the glow plug thing, right? It has to warm it up. Yep. What do you think, Lex? Yeah, this is so hood in here. It's so hard to work in like just chaos everywhere, but you know, we're just trying to tell ourselves it's getting slightly it's getting better. better. It's getting better. Look at, look at what we've done so far. It's getting better. It's just, we have a lot of things in the way of all of our projects. We should just build another shed to store the things in this shed so we can finish this shed. Don't tempt me, I will do it. <laughs> all right, it just started clicking a few minutes after uh, heating up the glow plug, and I think it's gonna start pumping out heat. Uh, this one's a little bit louder than the one in the bus. Um, I think maybe because it's like beneath the bench area. So the, the difference is in the bus, the fuel pump is mounted under our bed and the bed is kind of a sealed off area. Oh yeah. And I mounted that on like a rubber hanger to kind of like isolate it. This is mounted in this metal box and it sounds like it's mounted in a metal box. I'm not feeling anything yet. All right, it just stopped clicking and I'm still feeling no heat. We probably need to prime it even though there's no instructions 
that says prime it. And I was thinking one of the advantages to these all-in-ones is that you don't need to prime and figure out all the voodoo science to get it to work. While I was looking up how to prime it, it started clicking again. So maybe it's going to give it another shot. Maybe it was an auto prime. I, I don't know what's going on. I feel like maybe a little bit of heat. I don't really know what's happening right now. It's doing something. All right, so it did start running I, and I'm feeling some heat. So I smell some exhaust, what's this doing? So you're actually not smelling exhaust, you're smelling some oils from that header wrap. This oh. is the first time we're ever running this, so it okay. might smell a little funky. Um, just have a fire extinguisher on hand just in case. So the other thing we learned about diesel heaters is that this controller does not have an altimeter in it. The blue one um, has like a mountain symbol so you can run it at high altitude and then it will supposedly adjust the fuel ratio and the air depending on your altitude. It doesn't do that. You actually need to set all that stuff manually. So if you want to do that, Google it. I don't know. I'll, I'll put a graphic up like right here. That tells say, you we something. have a video on this, don't yeah. we? Yeah, not yet, but yeah. yes. So you need to know your altitude and then you can set your um, max rate for the fuel pump, max airflow, and then your, your minimum rate for the fuel pump and your minimum airflow. Because if you run it too low, when it's really cold out, everything will coke up. So oh, it does feel warm. Put your hand over there. Oh yeah, definitely heat. We have power, we have heat. This is so luxurious, Sarah. I'm just gonna lay out on that. All right, it has been about 10 minutes and we are Woo! we're getting quite a bit toastier in here. I'm happy. We now have heat in a shed. And you know, the other thing that's interesting is um, when we first turned this thing on, it was really loud and now it's a lot quieter. So I don't really know if the fuel pump just had to break in. Have fuel like in all of the parts and then deadening the sound or yeah so right now what we are doing is we are using this to heat up some uh cider and uh <laughs> fireball and the real next plan is to make a little boot um warmer mount thing yeah we, we luckily have a bunch of uh diesel heater spares here so we're gonna rig up something under here to put our boot bags and maybe our mittens i don't know what's gonna make a Spaghetti octopus of gonna get creative. drying things. <laughs> Spaghetti octopus, I like that. But for now, it's 75 in here, and it was previously 53. So we should maybe turn it down soon. I don't know. <laughs> what What do you like and don't you like about this one for our needs? It, it is pretty small. I think if you mounted it in a vehicle where you could just go straight out the bottom of the floor and you didn't need risers like this. Mm -hmm. H calorie, if you want to be better than everyone else, just make your own instructions. Please, please. These are these are very, very generic, even though there are many yeah, pages, it's not very helpful. I think what's really funny is like, you get to here and I'm trying to hook up the exhaust and it wouldn't tell me which port was the exhaust. And it shows this right here. But then when you turn to read more, it just starts talking about the controller and it just, it skips over the installation and it skips over even connecting the, the intake and the exhaust tube. So I had to Google that. I do think that they are a very economical way to heat spaces, um, especially at altitude. Lugging propane tanks around is no fun. You got to go exchange them and everything. Meanwhile, you can just get diesel whenever you're filling up your car and it's, it's just painless. All right, so that's about it for this episode. We now have a toasty shed. If you want one of these, I'm gonna put a link down below with a discount code. It is ROBVAN10, and that's gonna save you almost 20 bucks. So enjoy, till next time dudes, and stay red.